It's super exciting. We were one of the first institutions to map our R and a BSN completion program to the new essentials. And so it was just exciting to see the four spheres of care come to fruition, to actually see the AACN take a good look at how we provided nursing care over the last decades and continue to evolve that through thinking through a holistic approach and looking at all the care instances of patient interactions within the healthcare community and their community and the system. So what I love most about the essentials is it really takes a assessment of what a patient, a patient's family, and the community's health journey is by thinking about not only mental health and wellness, but overall the impact on the community at large through population and public health, thinking through disaster management, which we now know is imperative and important, um, but also thinking about preventative care and well-being, and continually to bring a focus on diversity, equity, inclusion that's also integrated throughout the new essentials. I think that was a bold step on behalf of AACN because in the past, we would create almost like a nudge or a bullet point on DEI and the DEI was just the bullet point and what they did in the new essentials is that they decided to take diversity equity and inclusion and also justice um, and integrate them throughout the new essentials. I was part of the diversity equ equity and inclusion toolkit team that developed the new framework for our competencies within diversity equity and inclusion for the AACN. And as part of that work group over a two year period, we really thought about how would we mirror and understand how to integrate diversity, equity, inclusion in the new essentials. And so as part of that original team to help build a new toolkit, at the same time, the new essentials were being revised. And so we were able to create synergies together to help build this kind of holistic approach and thinking about the integration of diversity, equity, inclusion competencies within the essentials. And I am just so very proud to be part of the AACN and part of the member schools because of the revision in the essentials, we have a new focus in nursing. We can think about the next 20, 50 years and how we can provide advanced care to patients and communities and in our move to value-based care. If you think about the essentials, they are thinking through, they're using a framework that allows us to continue to evolve without having to edit. Um, in the past, many of our competencies or standards were built very rigid. And so you had to update them more quickly because they would be out of date pretty quickly. And so now with the new revised essentials, we have this evergreen opportunity to continue to expand. Uh, they're not so finite that we don't have the ability to be vibrant and to be innovative and to decide to do things a little bit different. And in the past, we just haven't had that ability. To me personally, and my vision at the Levitt School of Health has been specifically for the underserved, marginalized population and rural populations. And when you think about data sharing, you need to think from the lens of the smallest school in the middle of nowhere. If you can think from that lens when you build anything, you can then understand and ensure that you are going to be able to allow the nursing education professionals to be able to use the information at scale. Okay. So I think that the new data sharing practices and our technology core competencies and understanding interoperability and use of technology and talking about the importance of data sharing allows those who are in the far reaches of the country to be able to build a curriculum that develops the same level of professional as any university in an urban area. That's different. Uh, in the past, oftentimes we had very large institutions like my own that would provide kind of these guiding frameworks, but we had a lot of tools and a lot of uh, teams and a lot of opportunity to uh, get a lot of resources. We had ability and access to resources. Through this data sharing framework, if we build this, we are allowing, let's say my institution, we will build something using all of those different technologies, but we have the opportunity to share that 
so that another institution that may not have the same capabilities or the same staffing or the same access to resources can adapt the information because I'm doing it at scale. I represent close to 30,000 in grad, you know, students that are nurses. Um, I represent about 120,000 graduates. I have a good end, right? That's thorough in that can then demonstrate to other institutions. Yes, you can use this information. It's valid and reliable because we have a very large institution that you can then build some practices off of. Um, data sharing is so important. We haven't done that well, I think, in the past because um, maybe we felt it was some competitive nature. Uh, we are in a massive shortage. There's no, no real room for competition. We need to all bound together in education and nursing education to really advance health equity and also to aid our workforce development. It's up to us. And so by sharing information and at the technology work group, we worked really hard to make sure we created a, a guidelines that would be easily understandable and easily adaptable. We understand this is a process of change, right? A big transition into moving us to really sharing out and making sure that we are empowering each other to create the same quality nurse over and over and over again, no matter where you are. And so that's why I'm excited about it because I think if we have an opportunity to build an infrastructure in which we care about each other, uh, we care about the end product, and that is the practicing nurse at the bedside with patients impacting communities. And I, I always remind our nursing students, you impact generations. You don't just impact yourself and your family or that patient in their community. Every decision you make when it comes to not only your life as a professional, but also the care that you provide to your patient impacts communities. And by creating an opportunity for us to share data, creating a technology framework, really making sure that people understand what interoperability is and their opportunity to um, use and share and guide, it's gonna help us all move toward competency-based education a lot easier and also make sure that our assessment um, our curricula is mapped accordingly, but also aided be easily disseminated across institutions.